morning. Uh, all right, so first, <clears throat> I didn't even want to come. And I probably came in the building with the wrong spirit because I really didn't want to come. <laughs> Pastor, first lady, they kind of cornered me, so I had to be there. And I was happy to be there because my family was there. And it was, uh, it was very enlightening because that's only half my family. My older half, I barely get a chance to talk to them, see them, or anything. And I realized just listening to Pastor Minister uh, Kiel and, and <coughs> some of the other stories that they were telling that there were some steps that I missed. I might, I know I ain't the perfect dad. I ain't the perfect anything. But when it comes down to my kids, I'm, I'm real crazy about my kids. I love my kids. But being a father has its challenges. Amen. <laughs> it, it was some doors that <laughs> that uh, I really, really wanted to like run through and and be like the, the like Superman father. I mostly got daughters, so I want to be their hero. You find out later on that all of those choices that you're making are not the best choices because you're a chaplain and not you know uh, handling your responsibility. You're not. Uh, teaching, you're not disciplining. Uh, it, it's more of the give, 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 and less of the what? What is the uh, uh, spread the rod? You know, <coughs> yeah, I spread the rod a lot. <laughs> so now that they are not always in full communication with me, it, sometimes it hurts. It's like I'm the one getting the whooping, you know. <laughs> so anyway, I did learn. Uh, they 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 dropped a lot of nuggets, and I was picking them up. I'm just scooping them up. I'm, I'm trying to make sure that everything that I do now, especially with my younger kids, their mom, that, you know, I try to do it to the best of my ability through the grace of God and um, and, and the teachings of, of New Jerusalem. So, so please, uh, it, it will be helpful for a lot of us who don't understand the relationship between mother, father, children, uh, children, children, friends, you know, the, the relationships are, are very important. That's the reason why God put them in the Bible. So we need to understand the power of relationships and really, really uh, try to move forward in building our communities. So every first month, I mean, first, of the first Saturday of every month, please come on out, kick it with us, hang out. We might learn something too. All right, God bless you. Amen. <coughs> All right, so I believe we are we are live now, and um, I believe the the sound is working again, so that's good. Um, on July twenty second, that is the 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 tea brunch, and that starts at eleven thirty until what time? Uh, is it 11.30 to, to 1.30, 2 o'clock, somewhere around there? Okay. Uh, on the 22nd, I received a phone call uh, a few days ago from Pastor Anthony Robinson. Pastor Robinson will be our guest speaker for the Family and Friends Day on August the 20th. But he called, and he asked about us doing a fellowship on July the 22nd, and I believe that time is from 3 to 5. We have two other churches, New Salem with uh, Pastor Michael Franks and Lady Lily Franks, um, and see, that's New Salem, and St. Luke's, which is Pastor Anthony Robinson. And what they would like to do is do a bowling tournament, a bowling tournament with the three churches. There's going to be a trophy that trophy will be given annually. Whoever is the winner takes the trophy home until the next year when uh, we win it again. But um, from three, I believe it's three to five, two hours of bowling. And um, we'll have however many teams of people that, that show up. So on the 22nd from three to five, and I believe it's going to be at the Tropicana, Tropicana Bowling, which is, uh, that's close to Clayton, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so if you all are familiar with that bowling alley, 
we just, uh, he said what he was really trying to do was show the churches and Christian folks that we can have fun. And, and if, if any of you all have ever went out bowling with us, because the church, I think, at once upon a time was part of a bowling league, and uh, we did well. We, we did well. We had some really good bowlers. You don't have to be a good bowler. We, we, just, we just want you to come out and fellowship, have fun. Um, I believe we have as many as four or five to every lane, and however many we have, that's how many lanes, and then we will, uh, New Jerusalem will bowl against New Salem and St. Luke, and whoever wins, wins, but it's just, it's just for the fun. Amen? So we're asking all of those who would like to participate to please come out and do so. Um, we will look at what that cost is. I'm not sure if it's like, you know, 5 or $6 a game or something like that. We just want you to have fun. If, if that price, and please don't take advantage of the church, but if that price is too steep but you want to come anyway, please come. Uh, talk to myself or Lady Adams personally. Uh, that will be in confidence uh, if you have some financial issues, and we will work with you so that you can come and enjoy it. Amen? Okay. Uh, I believe those are all of the quote-unquote extra announcements. I know we had our regular announcements, but I wanted to make that uh, particular announcement to you myself. Uh, to say thank you also for all of those who came out and supported the anniversary. It meant a lot. I really appreciate all of those who came, supported uh, to the best of your ability. I know some said, Pastor, uh, we weren't able to give the, the, the full 200, or some gave more than 200. Uh, and then there are some who said, I'm still working on it. You can put yours on layaway. Just make sure whenever you do send whatever amount for the anniversary that you put on there, pastor's anniversary or pastor wellness or something like that, so that they know where it is supposed to go. We asked every family for uh, $200. We've been asking that amount for, I know, 30 years. Uh, I didn't know if, if in 1977 or 78, we was asking for $200 then, but... Uh, Inflation is, is something, ain't it? Anybody remember when eggs was less than a dollar? Well, they ain't no more. But, you know, we didn't, the price of gas has doubled, the price of homes have doubled, the price of cars have doubled, but we haven't doubled um, what we asked for because we know that really if we did, a lot of people wouldn't. But you do what you want to do, right? We, we all do what we want to do. When, when they call you with those offerings to go to a timeshare and come see it for $300 for a whole week, you find the money if you want to. Whatever you want to do, you find the money. If you want to find money to smoke with, you find money to smoke with. If you want to find money to go to the boat with, you find the money to go to the boat with. So you, you do what you want to do. That's, that's really what it boils down to. So for all of those who chose and, and, and who made the sacrifice, we just want to say thank you. We appreciate it. And it's still not too late. All right. Um, we, we, got, we still got quite a bit that's on the agenda for today. Um, why don't we... Let's, let's, let's go ahead and do the presentations now. Can you bring me... Uh, Brother Ben, can you bring me those certificates and uh, the Bibles and the shirts and all of that stuff so that those who are here, we can make the presentation. These are for all of the folks uh, this past month who were baptized. And I'm, again, I'm grateful for those who have uh, received baptism. Uh, is Landon here? Landon is not here? Huh? Well, no, no. I, I want to present this to them. That's, that's important. I want them to, to be able to receive their certificate, their Bible, and their shirts. Somebody else just came in. Might have been. Was that Martez that just came in? 
Okay, I, I, I don't have this for him. Is King here? King, would you come here? Is that a small? Yeah, that's a small. All right. Mr. King, would you? I want to make sure that we don't stand behind this. Man, I'm, I'm proud of you. I want to give you your certificate for your baptism. This says, baptism that certifies that King Morrow was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit at New Jerusalem Church on the 25th day of June in the year of our Lord, 2023, done by yours truly, which is me, uh, Pastor Alonzo Adams, Jr. Here is your certificate. Here is a T-shirt, and you all, if y'all don't mind, I just want to read this T-shirt once so that uh, everybody who comes up, we don't have to read the same thing over. But uh, this T-shirt says, I left, I left it in the water, proud to be baptized. That's the front. And on the back it says, follow me to New Jerusalem. So here is your T-shirt. And everybody gets a Bible uh, from New Jerusalem, but mom and dad got a special Bible for you. This is the New International Version Adventure Bible. This was given to you by your mom and your dad, and there are things written in there that's special just for you, okay? All right. Congratulations, man. All right. Thank you. He just, where did he go? Brother Mortez Little, come on down. You're the next contestant. New beginnings. Yeah, absolutely. So this Bible was dedicated to you and prayed over that you will take the time and read it and study it. And this is your certificate for baptism. This says, this certifies that Martez Little was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit at New Jerusalem on the 25th day of June, 2023. All right. All right. Turn it around. All right. And I don't want to give you a small shirt because is this a large Yep, there we go. There you go. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, is Artez here? All right. This is your certificate of baptism. This says, this certificate. This certifies that Artez Brantley was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit at New Jerusalem Church on the 25th day of June in the year of our Lord, 2023. This is your certificate. Turn it around so we can get a picture. Hold it up. <laughs> All right. And this is your Bible. And because you did, uh, because all, all of those who did baptism will be able to receive communion with us on today, which is why we wanted to present this. And do we have, let's see, what, is that, is that the smaller as we, oh, medium, okay. If it's too big, don't tie it up in the front, it looks funny. <laughs> all right. You all, uh, those, those were for the baptisms that we had this month. On the fourth Sunday of every month, we will be doing baptisms. So um, we want to say thank you. We thank God that we are baptizing now. And I understand that we do have some more who are ready now. Uh, 
they had already joined, but they were waiting until they were ready and comfortable. So on the fourth Sunday, we will have um, baptism, and then we'll also have those certificates afterwards. Good morning to all of those who are uh, worshiping with us via the live stream. Uh, everything is on, so we ask that if, if you all will, please go log in and uh, share this. Let folks know that you're watching. Good morning to, to our member uh, who is affiliated with us in South Carolina. Brother David Fisher is watching with us and worshiping with us this morning, and he has sent his salutations. Let us go right into the word. I believe uh, um, my family at home is watching with us. So uh, you all, please continue to keep them in your prayers. Let's, uh, let's go to the word. I think it's necessary and it's timely. What time is it? We are good. All right. Let us start with Jonah. The book of Jonah, we'll be reading from the King James, Jonah chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. And then we will do Matthew chapter 8 verses 18 through 27. After that, uh, we will go to the 20, no, the 121 number of Psalms. I believe it's one through really verse five. We have it, Jonah chapter 1, starting at verse 1 from the King James. It says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee until Tarsh from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down unto it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent, the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the, uh, the, the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God. And cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. Matthew chapter 8, verse 18 through 27, reading quickly. Now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to the depart unto the other side. And a certain scribe. And said, uh, a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee wheresoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury the dead. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Last but not least, uh, this was just added after we made all of these notes, but uh, it brought to my attention Psalms 121. And it says, starting at verse 1, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From which cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. 
Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. We want to just keep the, the first part of verse 5, and it says, The Lord is thy keeper. May God bless the reading, hearing, and doing of his words. You can be seated. Let's talk. Let's talk. Uh, and if, that, if, if, if you all listen to that when I say let's talk, that's L-E-T apostrophe S, which means let us. Let us talk for just a little bit on the idea sleeping during the storm. Sleeping during the storm. Um, dear God, I, I, I pray right now that as we talk to your people, or really, Lord, as you talk to your people, let me be silent. Let you do the speaking and let them hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. In Jesus' name, amen. You all, uh, we're, 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 we're talking about sleeping during the storm. Uh, yesterday, Yesterday, there, there were some storms that came through, uh, and, and over the past few days here in the greater St. Louis metropolitan area, there have been storms that have come, and um, one, one of my kids, if, if not multiple, said to me, Dad, this, this, this weather is good sleeping weather. When, when it starts raining and all of that, it, it, it makes you tired. It, it makes you want to sleep. During regular storms, uh, the, the clouds come in. It gets dark. Hearing the water hitting against the, the roof and all of that, it's, it's tranquil. And a lot of times it puts you to sleep. But most of us, when we're dealing with the storms of life, it does just the opposite. When we are going through a storm in our life, what normally happens is that it keeps us up. It keeps us woke. During the midnight hours when everybody is sleeping, you can't sleep because something is going on that has grabbed your attention, that has, has, has made you, if, if you will, anxious. Uh, there is anxieties, there is worries. Lord, there is something going on in my family. There is something going wrong with my job. There is something wrong with my finances. There's something wrong with my vehicles. It's just something wrong, and if there's something wrong, I just cannot seem to sleep. Have anybody ever had a problem that, that kept you from sleeping the way that you wanted to? I mean, if, if you've ever had a problem that, that something came in, there was something going on, uh, when you love someone, or, 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 or if you love yourself and something happens, it bothers you. Now, I, I've always wondered, <clears throat> the Bible tells you to be anxious for nothing. In other words, don't have any anxieties about anything. Well, I, has anybody ever had a problem with that scripture? As a matter of fact, has anybody ever had a problem with scriptures? Or is, is there some scriptures that, that you just haven't been able to really agree with? I mean, tell the truth. I, I know it's the word of God. I know God's word is real. I know it's true. But there are some pro there are some scriptures that I got a problem with. There's one that says, be perfect for I am perfect. Well, Lord, if I was perfect, there would be no reason for Jesus. But he still tells us to be perfect. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. Well, well, some of us got parents that we haven't always agreed with. Now, if your mom and your daddy sitting right next to you, don't say nothing just yet because, you know, I couldn't tell my parents when I was growing up, I disagree with that. But God is my heavenly father, and there are, there are certain things that God tell me to do that I still don't agree with. Will you come on now? Well, y'all tell the truth. There are some things that God have told you to do. There, there are some of you all who got bills that are overflowing, and God said, pay your tithes. And you said, well, Lord, do you want me to get put out of my house? I can't pay tithes this week because I got, I got this bill that came up and, and this bill that came up and, and, and all of these things that happened. And, Lord, you know, can I, can I get a pass on it this week? Have anybody ever asked God for a pass? Not, not just on your money, but, you know, uh, the order of service says service starts at, at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. And, and, and you wake up at 8 o'clock and you're like, well, uh, can I just get a pass? 
Bible study is at uh, uh, six thirty on on Tuesday evenings, and you get home and and you done had a long day at work, and you're mad, and your boss done teed you off, and you you get home and the house is dirty, the kids didn't clean it up, you aggravated, you frustrated, and you say, well, you know what? N- not today. I I just I take a pass on it. There's a lot of times when we look at the word of God and it, we know that it's talking to us because uh, the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. So there's not some scriptures that's just good for you, but not good for the other person. I know there are some scriptures, you know, we want to do uh, or I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We want, you know, and, and my God shall supply all of my needs. But what about the other scriptures that says? Be perfect. What about the other scriptures that say don't lie? What about the other scriptures that say don't fornicate? What about the other scriptures that say don't commit adultery? What about the other scriptures that says be sober-minded always? Some of us drinking just a little bit too much. Now, I, 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 some years ago, we had a debate. We had a Christian debate on the use of marijuana. That was before it was legal. But they were talking years ago about the possibility of legalizing it. And we asked the question, what is going to be the church's stance on it? Well, let me ask the question, what is the church's stance on it? Because I do know that you can drink without getting drunk. But if the Bible says to be sober-minded always, I have to ask you a question, can you smoke without getting high? Hmm. Hmm. Now, maybe if you've been chiefing for 20 years, you done built up a certain resistance. You ain't smoking just because you want to eat. I digress. I just wanted to drop that into your system. That was free. Ain't charge you nothing for it. But there are scriptures that we want to look past and try to figure, which one am I going to do? What the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Well, Lord, how can I have no anxieties? You all, uh, this morning, this this morning, last night, last night we went to bed and uh, Lady Adam said, honey, I'm just, I'm not feeling well. Can you pray for me? You all, sometimes you get tired of praying for the same thing. I got to be honest. Sometimes it, it, I'm not irritated with her when she say pray for me. I'm irritated that I got to keep praying for the same thing. When I have asked God, when I know I have believed God, when I know I have trusted God, when I know I have done to the best of my ability, and I want to say, why am I still dealing with this same situation over and over and over when, when Lord, have, have you ever took your record to God. Lord, didn't I do this? When you told me to do such and such, didn't I do that? So if I did what you told me, why won't you do what I'm asking? Have you all ever got upset with God? I I mean, I know you saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, speak in tongues and all of that, but have you ever got upset with God? Have you ever just went to God and say, why me? Have you ever went to God and say, why did you take my loved one? Why did you allow me to lose my job? Why did you let my car get blowed up? Why did you let me get hit in this storm? Why? Y'all, first of all, let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with asking God why. There's nothing wrong with questioning God. Now, there is a level of respect you got to go to him with. This is what I want to talk to you about today. I don't want to talk to you really about sleeping. Sleeping is the side effect. What I want to talk to you about is the main thing. And some of us need to keep the main thing the main thing. Many of us are having arguments and we arguing over stuff that we ain't really arguing about. What? What, what, what do you mean, preacher? What, what are we arguing about that we really ain't arguing about? There are many times when I have come home and, and something wasn't done, and I, I started arguing with the wife about something that wasn't done, but I've been waiting to get to her for something else. 
and I used what wasn't done as an avenue to, to kick off the argument. Right? Ladies, he, he, he didn't bring you no flowers on your anniversary, and that was a month ago, and you've been waiting on your flowers. You still ain't got none, so he came home five minutes late, and you holler, where you been? I know you got off work at 5 o'clock. You're supposed to be home at 5.30. It's 5.35. What you do in the mother five minutes? Who you done stopped off at and got a little smooch on five minutes? Well, really, you ain't mad about five minutes. You mad about them flowers that you, you've been waiting on that you was expecting that you didn't get. Not 20 minutes into the argument about the five minutes, you say, and where is my flowers? Oh, so that's really what, why didn't we just start with that? Many of us are, 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 are going through things, and we need to keep the main thing, the main thing. The main thing that I want to talk to you about is how can you sleep? in the middle of your storm. Well, I, I want to tell you how you can do it. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says it this way, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge God. He'll direct you if you can trust God. If you can trust God even in the middle of all of your circumstances, in the middle of your situation, in the middle of your illness, in the middle of your debilitations, in the middle of your financial crisis, in the middle of your health crisis, if you can trust that God has everything in control. But many of us say that we trust God. But I, I, I learned that yesterday... Yesterday, as we was talking about what the husband's role uh, 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 in the family is, and God told the husband, husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church. And many of us say we love our wives for those of us who are married or those of us who are dating. And, 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 and I had to bring out yesterday, uh, we was talking about my son and the situation in which he was dating, and, and he brought an individual over to the house to meet us, and he said, Dad, this is my friend, my lady friend, Mom, Dad, and my lady friend. We said, lady friend, how are you? She said, well, I'm good, but, uh, I mean, really, we just friends. We, we really ain't, you know, lady friends and guy friends, not like that. Well, I looked at her, and I said, well, then what you doing at my house? You ain't got no reason. Don't just bring your friends over here for the sake. Of, I thought we was meeting a significant other. And if y'all ain't, ain't like that, then you wasting my time being here. She was offended. <laughs> and, and, and because she got offended, my son got offended. And he said, Dad, you, you, you messing up stuff. See, not, not that she mad, she won't be happy. And if she ain't happy, so I had to tell him, son, um, that's not how we raised you. We don't date for, for, for casual intimacy. We date because we are looking for the husband that God is sending or the wife that God is sending. So if, 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 if you brought a young lady that ain't a potential wife, don't bring her. Brothers and sisters, many of us are doing it all wrong and don't understand it. I'm so sick of hearing, well, I want to just try on the shoes before I buy them. I don't mind necessarily buying a used car. Some things shouldn't be used before you buy it. Many of you all are giving up the milk when they ain't bought the cow. And then you wonder why there are so many cows in your house. There's a whole lot of heifers. 
I digress. But when we were talking yesterday and we talked about love, we realized that that word love is thrown around a whole lot. Many people say, I love you, but uh, I, I say it to myself and I said to the folks yesterday, there are times when if the Bible says love is patient, love is kind. How many times have you uh, or your wife uh, have thrown up in each other's face in which my wife w w would do it all the time? She would tell me, well, I remember when you did such and such. Well, I remember you told me you forgave me for such and such. And if you forgave me for it, then you ain't supposed to bring it back up. Because the Bible says love does not keep record of wrongdoings. So if love don't keep record of wrongdoings, whenever you bring up my wrongdoings from the past, you're telling me that I don't love you. Or at least I don't love you the way God loves. How about that? Because the Bible says if you love me, you would keep my commandments. But how many of us break his commandments? Is there anybody in the church who has ever broken God's commandments? Have you broken his commandment this week? How many of us can, can honestly say maybe that we break God's commandments on a daily basis? Is, is there anybody besides myself who's willing to, to, to tell the truth and say, I think I sin on a daily basis? Now, it don't matter if my sin is your sin. Do you know that the Bible says that if you sin, if you break one law, you broke all of them. There are some people who, who, who think that their dirt is better than my dirt. I can't stand dirty people looking at me talking about you dirty. The flesh is made of dirt. And the Bible says that there is nothing good that can come from the flesh. So if you smoking, drinking, hoeing, and everything else, and I just tell a lie, my dirt ain't no better than your dirt. Y'all, I met a lady this week. She was, at the, she was at the quick trip. She was trying to put some air in the tire. The machine said broke. The machine said broke, but she's still trying to put air even though the machine said it was broke. And then she was crying because the air wasn't going in. And I said, ma'am, is it not working? Because y'all know what happens. Even though the machine said broke because you see somebody there, you pull in right behind them. And I wanted to use that same broke machine. But I, I realized something was wrong. You know, after, after we got to talking for a minute or two, uh, she said that she was having some issues. Uh, there, there had been some hurt and some pain in her life. I gave her a card, and I said, come to church. She, she looked at me, and she looked at the card, and then she looked at me again and in the midst of all of her tears, and, and she said, uh, is your church... Uh, I, I thought she was going to ask, is it a Baptist church? Because I gave her one, I had one of the old cards and it said Baptist. And I was waiting on it. But she said, is your church the kind of church that judges? I said, no, ma'am, at our church, there is no judgment. Because we are who we are. I said, now, th there might be some people who might look at you funny. Just tell the truth because I don't want to lie to folks and tell folks you can come and ain't nobody going to judge you when I know half the people in the church is, right? Because if an individual don't look like you, dress like you, act like you, uh, that, that's how we do. All of us judge other folks. I wish I had time to really go into that, but I, but I don't. But brothers and sisters, the Bible says lest you forget how many of us have forgotten what God has brought us through how many of us have forgotten what, 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 what God has done for us God done brought us out of some situations that, that we done put ourselves back in 
God has delivered us from some situations. And, and, and I'm talking to folks today who said, I will never go back. I remember Bishop talking about when he was drinking. And every night when, when, when he was sick and his head was deep into the toilet, throwing, oh, Lord, if you just get me out of this. Lord, if, if you take this away from me, I swear for God, I won't do this no more. Lord, just, just take it away. As soon as he went to sleep and got up the next morning and was feeling better. How many of you all have God brought you out of a situation that you told God, if you get me out of this situation, I won't put myself back in it. And as soon as it looked like you were doing a little bit better, you walked right back into the same situation. Somebody said, I can't help you, Harry, if you want to sleep on the ground. When you get back into your same situation, when I pull you out of the fire and your crazy tail jump right back in it, I'm not going in there after you. Do you know that the lifeguard is taught if they, if they swim out to you and you are in distress, if you are in distress and you flailing all around in the water and all of that, the lifeguard's job is to swim up to you Get maybe five feet or so from you and just sit there and tread water and wait for you to go under. And when you go under, then they go get you and bring you back. Why? Because an individual who's panicking and all of that, when you go to grab them, the first thing they do is push you under. So as a lifeguard or an individual who's a rescue swimmer, we were taught when you walk up to them or when you swim up to them, wait. And as soon as they lose all energy and go under, then you get them and you bring them to safety. The church is going after a whole lot of people trying to save folks, and you all are taking us down with you. We have wasted countless hours trying to help people who were drowning and hurting, and all you did was jump right back into the same situation. Trust. Anxieties. God says, trust me, but if you don't know what love is, the same way we don't know what love is, we don't know what trust is. When the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, how can you really trust God and say that you love God when things happen and you start crying and screaming and, and Lord, well, if you trust me, how many times have God told you to jump? <laughs> we, were, we were on vacation one year. And I told my baby, come on, baby, jump. I'm in the pool. Daddy got you. Okay. <laughs> she ain't asked no questions. She just jumped. I caught her, but I caught her down here. So when she came back up, she... <laughs> I put her back on the top. I said, jump. She said, mm-mm. She said, you're going to let me drown again. And I told her, baby, you didn't drown the first time. Now, in her mind, I went under the water. I couldn't breathe underneath there, so that's drowning. So her definition of drowning was off, but I understood that her level of trust had been broken but we trust God according to our level of experience with him. So how many of us have God ever let you down? So when we say we trust God, do you really trust him? Because the Bible says, how was, I haven't had a time to really go through the, the, the text and, 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 and exergate the, the text of Jesus sleeping in the ship. 
or even Jonah. And I brought up those two because I know Jesus didn't have nothing to worry about. Jesus was righteous. But Jonah, y'all, Jonah was running from God. Was running from what he was told to do. But he still had enough faith, even in his disobedience, to say, I do know who I'm running from. And I know that even in my bad times, even in my disobedience, God is going to take care of me. So even in the midst of the storm, while everybody else was tripping and running around and screaming to their gods, Jonah is in the ship, sleeping. How many of you all have learned how to trust God enough to where when all hell is breaking loose, you can still sleep? Some of y'all in here, y'all look tired. Eyes red, bags all under because you ain't got no sleep. You all, I love my wife. I love her. But I've gotten to the place now to even when she's up and she's hurting and she's moaning, I get up, we give her whatever medicine that we have access to. I make sure that she can get to and from the restroom. She says, I'm cold. I, I done went and got six blankets. And I done put them all. And she's, she's shivering. And her teeth are chattering to where I could hear them. And I asked her, is there anything else, honey, that I can do for you? She said, no. I said, okay. I went to sleep. Somebody said, how can you sleep when she's hurting? I can't hurt for her. All I can do is give it to God. And I serve a God that says, I don't sleep and I don't slumber. So it don't make no sense for all of us to be woke. I still got a job to do. I still got to come and make sure that I deliver the word to you. I still have to make sure that I can get up and go to work so that she can stay at home and be in the bed. So even when all hell is breaking loose, when she's in the hospital, when the doctors are pumping her full of medicine, when they're sticking her and all of that, I still have to be able to sleep because God, I've put it in your hands. I'm trusting you with all of these situations. When my kids are doing things and then it looks like they're not paying me any attention and they're going and I'm saying, Lord, there's nothing I can do about it. Am I upset? Yes. Is there a level of anxiety? Yes. But all I can do is pray, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I can't hide behind, Lord, I'm only human. But I tell God, I put into your hands all that I cannot do. I will continue to do the best that I can do. God, I'm asking you to do the rest. The Bible says that he will keep you in perfect peace. If you keep your eyes, keep your mind stayed on him. How many of you all have ever tried to keep your mind on something, but something kept, kept taking you off of it? <clears throat> Is there any saved, sanctified people in here that ever tried, to, uh, ever tried to pray, but in the middle of your prayer, your phone went off? Is there anybody in here that ever tried to pray, but while you were praying, somebody turned on a show that you liked? Have you ever tried reading your Bible and you started thinking about what happened at work? Have you ever been in church and started thinking about what you was going to have for dinner after church? God says, I will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind on me. But how hard is it to keep your mind on God when all hell is breaking loose? You all, we, 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 we had a situation, and, and I'm just about done. We had a situation. We are working with the banks, and we are getting some things done. Finally, all of the paperwork has finally been done, and we are in a position to start moving some things around. And I, I called the bank, and I said, I need to know what we owe so that we can try to figure out what we're going to do. After 13 years of having a special agreement with the bank, 
do you know that after 13 years, they told us that we owe like $50 less than what we owed 13 years ago? I said, what kind of math are y'all doing? Now you tell me that my loan is principal only, which means after 13 years, it should be about gone. You all, I got so upset, I got aggravated, I got frustrated, and I, I, I started looking through my own papers. And I started wondering, who did this man think I am? He must think that I'm some kind of fool, like I don't know how to count. And God says, are you really thinking about you or are you thinking about me? Because I said, I'm going to fight for you, so why are you worried about what you're going to do? If I said I was going to take care of it, if I said I was lining up everything to work for your good, then why are you worried about it? Why are you worried about, you know, you beating on your chest? You telling people who you are. You want to tell them who you are and where you came from and you want to show them your degree. Your degree ain't got nothing to do with what I'm doing. How many times have I had to tell you that it ain't nothing to do with you? This is not about you. The Bible says, let your light so shine so that men and women could see your good work, not so that they could say your good works. The Bible says so that they could glorify God. But how many of you all want to have good works so that somebody can say, ooh, look what she did. Ooh, look what he did. Oh, Jerusalem is really growing because Junior, no. Junior ain't done nothing. Quiet is kept. Bishop ain't done nothing. I can do all things through Christ. I can't do all things through daddy. I can't do all things through mama. I can't do it through my wife. I can't even do it through myself. Yes, I am the righteousness in Christ Jesus. If there's no Christ, there's no righteousness. At my best, with my collar, with my cross, with my holy oil, I could bathe myself in holy oil and I'm just a greasy sinner. At my best, the Bible says I'm a filthy rag. Can you trust God in the middle of your situation? While my wife is at home sick, I'm trusting him. When we don't have enough money to pay the mortgage, I'm trusting him. When it looked like all hell has broke loose, I'm trusting him. When folks show up for anniversaries, I trust them. When they don't show up, I trust them. When they pay, I trust them. When they don't pay, I trust them. When, when it, it don't matter. Paul says, I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. How many of you all, what, what is your nothing? Many people, I mean, I'm so sick of men and women lying. Baby, I ain't going to ever hurt you. Ever didn't take long, because a week later, you sleeping around. Sweetie, I never lied to you. You just lied then. Neither height nor depth, nor principalities, nor rulers. I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. Except a headache. If I get a headache, Pastor, I can't come. Pastor, I, I, I would come to church, but... They having a Mardi Gras parade and they giving out candy and beads and <laughs> pastor, I can't miss the beads. Woo! 
we have to figure out, are we going to be true to the game? I told my wife, for good, for bad, for rich, for poor, in sickness and in health, You all, if I told you that the devil didn't talk to me about my wife's sickness, I'd be lying to you. If I told you that some of the things we used to do that we can't do anymore, that the way that we used to go out and the way that we used to kick it, we can't. She's tired. The heels that she used to wear, you know, when, when, when she had her strut, she can't wear those heels now. And Satan would say, well, look at some other heels. But while she's hurting, let those who are strong bear the infirmities of those who are weak. So if I could pick her up and carry her across the threshold, or I could pick her up and take her to the bed of roses, then I can pick her up and take her to the bathroom. If, can I trust God in the midst and say, Lord, if you don't, I know that you can. Lord, I'm going to stay true regardless. Lord, if they show up, I'm going to preach. If they don't show up, I'm going to preach. Lord, I'm going to do the job that you sent me because one thing I know is that if you told me to do the job, you will send somebody for me to leave. God says, do the family class. The wife said, what if they don't show up? We're going to do the class. And if they don't show up this week, then we'll do it the following week. If nobody shows up, then we're going to keep all of the notes and we're going to use them on the next month. But we're going to continue to move forward because God said so. Yeah. Trust him. It's not about sleeping. This message ain't got nothing to do with sleeping. I know some of you all are sleeping in here, but that's not the point. You didn't go to sleep in, in, in here because you trusted the Lord. <laughs> Bishop says, some are tired. I'm tired. I had my cup of coffee this morning, but it didn't really do much. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I didn't get a lot of sleep this week, but I'm still here. Because I'm pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus because I trust in him who have sent me. Can you trust God even while you're going through? Can you be like Daniel? Headed towards the lion's den. Can you be like the Hebrew boys who right before they were thrown in, they said, oh, king, let me tell you something. I know you got the power to put me in. But I know the God who got the power to bring me out. And if God don't, let me let you know that I know that he can. And if God allow me to perish... I will be like Esther and say, if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to meet the king. May God bless you and may he forever keep you as our prayers. The doors of the church is open. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I will trust in the Lord until I die. That song says, I will trust in the Lord. But you have to understand what it means to really trust God. How many of you all really know what it means to trust him? How many of y'all are at least willing to give God the opportunity to show you that he's trustworthy? 
If you don't have a church home, and you are looking for a church home. Now, listen, we're, we're not trying to take nobody else's members. If you got a church home or you belong to a church, first of all, do things decent and in order. Because a dog that'll bring a bone to carry one. So if you will leave your church and just come over here and don't even tell the pastor that you got a problem, I believe you'll leave this church and go to another one and, and tell them, oh, Pastor Adams, he, he, he was just full of himself. Some of you all are going around, and, and, and I'm going to address some things later, but I have to do it in, in a closed setting. I'm going to do it when we're not live streaming. But, but let me say this for anybody who might be watching or who will watch later. Brothers and sisters, there is no perfect church. The church was perfect this morning at 7 o'clock. Nobody was here then. I was the first person here at roughly 8.30. When I walked in the door, it became unperfect. When I came in, Satan came with me. Every church got problems because everybody in here got problems. And you brought your problems. Hopefully, you brought your problems so that God would have an opportunity to fix them. People say that there are so many issues in the church. Well, of course there is because there are so many people. Practically every sin that is known to man is in here today. But what am I asking you to do? Go find some more people just like you and worse and bring them. Because the only chance they have of getting fixed is in here. God never asked you to clean them. He asked you to catch them. You catch them, I catch them, God cleans them. If you don't have a church home and you're looking for one, this is a good place for you to be. This is a place where people will love you. Some will judge you. But I supersede all of those judges. And once you become a member, you have all rights and privileges as any other member. And if you bring a problem to me, know that I will, I will meet that problem head on. There will be no he say, she say in here. Because I'm going to take he and she and bring them to you. There is a lot of he in and she in going on around in here. And I'm getting ready to stop it. I'm getting ready to go to everybody involved. I'm saying that right now because I hope that you will know I have proven to you that I am not a liar. I'm coming, and we're going to put a stop to it. That's just only right. The Bible says if you have a problem with your brother or sister, go to that one. Well, because there's more than one, I'm going to go to those ones. And the Bible says if you don't fix it, I'm going to bring you before the board of elders. And if you continue, then I'm going to bring you before the church. Open rebuke is better than secret love. We see that there is none, but yet there is room. God bless you. God keep you. We're going to prepare for our um, communion at this time. <coughs> I'm not sure for all of those who know what the purpose of communion is. I knew a lot of people who would not come to church on the first Sunday because uh, they were told that they couldn't receive communion because communion uh, was for people who was perfect. Or that if you, the Bible says that if you eat and drink unworthy, that you would, that, that the Bible says some are sleeping, which means some have died because they have eaten and drinking, or eaten, hey y'all, they ate and drank it unworthy. I don't know if I was using the eating and drinking uh, in, in the right context. My degree was not in English. But listen, 
if you think that eating and drinking uh, was a matter of you being perfect or, or your worthiness was whether or not you sin this week or this month or this day, that has nothing to do with it. The ability to, to eat and drink says that you have accepted Christ. Because, again, I've already told you, and, and, and if there's anyone, the only people who cannot partake in uh, communion are those who have not been baptized. It don't matter what church you come from. It don't matter what religion you are. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you are authorized to take the body and the blood. That's all. I know there are a lot of people in, in different churches who teach different things, and I'm not here to talk about what they teach. All I can teach is what God have told me to teach. The only thing that I can teach is the part that I believe to be true. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Once you have received salvation, and it is our custom that once you have been baptized, but the truth is, it doesn't matter if you've been baptized or not. If you accepted Jesus Christ, you're saved. Yeah. You all understand that? But we do it because baptism, God tells us baptism is one of the ordinances that shows to the people that you are not ashamed and that you have accepted Jesus Christ. Yeah. He said, if you are ashamed to, to own me before your fellow man, I'll be ashamed to own you before my father. So don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Jesus Christ died a very horrible death. He suffered. I can't go into just how bad he suffered, but Jesus suffered. He bled and he died. And he said to us, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me to show forth my suffering until I come again. And when I come, I will receive you unto myself that where I am, there you can be also. Yes. Brothers and sisters, many of us are, are living like Jesus ain't coming back. And I, I, I guarantee you, I guarantee dog to you, Jesus is coming. Many of us have said for years and for generations, we've heard things like we are living in the last days. One thing that I can assure you is that that statement is more true today than it was yesterday. How many of you all know that all of us are dying? Today, I'm one day closer to death than I was yesterday. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Do you know what that means? The wages of your work is your check. The more you work, the more you're going to get paid. Don't you all love God for that? Don't you love God that the more you work, except for those who might be on salary, I feel sorry for those on salary because it says no matter how much they work, they're going to get the same check. The only time they ever want to offer you salary is when they want you to work more than 40 hours. Be careful. Some people, I don't have time to go into all of that. But God says, the more you work, the more I'm going to pay you. Every time you sin, you bring your casket closer. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Bishop, would you bless all that is to be consumed on today? Amen. Let us take the body and eat it together. And the blood.
Let us drink it together. Amen. That concludes our service for today. We want to say thank you to all of those who came out and joined in with us. We want to say thank you to our visitors who came with us again on today. God bless you all. Thank you all so much for coming. If there, if there are any visitors who would like to have a word to say, uh, if there are any visitors that would like to have a word to say, uh, you've been so patient with us. We want to be patient also with you. If you would like to have a word, you can, you can stand and uh, give us your name and maybe your church affiliation or who invited you. Uh, we don't, we're not forcing you. Please, we're, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Let's, let's continue to do things decent and in order. If you would like to have a word to say, you can stand and we will recognize you. If you don't, you don't have to. We just want to say thank you for, for making Jerusalem your place of worship on today. Continue to pray for us. We are trying to grow. We are trying to move. There are some things that we want to do to make our service more compatible to, uh, to your life and your liking. But Jerusalem is not only a place of worship, it is a place of business. And it takes money to do everything. So we are trusting God for the money. He told us to go and catch the fish. And he said the money is in the mouth of the fish. So we just trust God. Uh, God bless you. God keep you. Uh, are you? A, yes, ma'am. Uh, he don't need an introduction. We know him. <laughs> He ain't new. <laughs> but we are glad to have him. We are glad to, uh, that, that he has made his way safely. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Amen. God bless you. So glad that you all made it. Uh, we hope that for the time that you all were here that you had an opportunity uh, to just kind of see a little bit about who we are and what we do. Uh, our services start at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings. The, um, that is the regular service. That's not the, the Sunday school. It's regular service. Uh, on Tuesday night, our Bible study uh, starts at 7 o'clock. Our prayer meeting is at 6.30 to 7. This Tuesday, we won't have prayer meeting or Bible study because it's the 4th and we're letting families be together. But uh, uh, hereafter, uh, almost every Tuesday prayer meeting and Bible class and every Sunday morning, uh, 9 o'clock. We would love to see you all again. I hope that you all got a, a visitor's card, and if you did not, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we'll, we, will, we will get them. Um, a, a lot of times my wife gets all of that stuff together, and with her not being here, we're, we're, we're somewhat behind the, the power curve, so forgive us for that. But we would love to get some information from you so that we can reach out and see if we can be of any assistance to the people who are in our neighborhood. So God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, yes, ma'am. Your granny. Well, your granny is, is a visitor. She visited with us, I believe, on last week for the first time. And she told me, she said, I will be back. And you all, she beat me here. She was, she was. She was the first one here this morning. I don't know what time she got here, but when I got here at 830, she was already on the parking lot. So I'm grateful for people who keep their word. We are looking forward to Granny being with us more often. Uh, so to God be all the glory. We, we thank you all. We ask that you would continue to, uh, to pray for us. If you all will, I'm going to do my best to uh, uh, make sure that everything gets put away and locked up. But I do, one, I have a job that I have to go to this afternoon. So before I do that, I want to get out of here and get home and check on my wife. So uh, I, I would love to normally just meet and greet with everyone. But if you all will, please forgive me and, and, and give me uh, a leave of absence that I can go and be with her. Is that okay? I, I will let her know. Lady Adams, I want you to know everybody is saying that they love you. I know you're watching. 
uh, whenever she's not here, she's always watching with us. So let us stand. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for allowing us to be together. We thank you for your word. We thank you for giving us the ability to trust you, Lord. We thank you that uh, we are learning to trust you even in the midst of our problems and that you have promised that you will give us rest. You said, look to the hills from which cometh our help. All of our help comes from you. God, we thank you that even in the midst of while we are going through this, you told us that you don't sleep, nor do you even take a nap. So it don't make sense for both of us to be up worrying about the problem. You said cast all of our cares on you because you care for us. So, Lord, I thank you for caring for my wife. I thank you for caring for all of those. Lord, I thank you for, for looking over Sister Betty in her hour of bereavement that she can still have joy even in the midst of the death that have occurred. But we put our trust in you. Lord, I thank you for those friends in our neighborhood that found us worthy. And God, I pray that if there's something special that they are needing, that they will be able to trust you or allow us the ability to help them to trust you so that we can work along the side of them. We, we love them, God, and we love you. We pray that you would never keep your presence from us. But as we leave this place, that you would go with those who are walking, go with those who are riding. And be with us when we get to our destinations to find that it's still in good work and order. We will give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen.